Hello everyone and welcome to Book Days. Today's adventure has brought us to the Texas State Aquarium in Corpus Christi, Texas. Today's adventure is inspired by the book Commotion in the Ocean, written by Giles Andre, illustrated by David Bojitoas. This book is a culmination of fun rhymes all about animals that live in and around the ocean. Some of those animals include turtles, crabs, whales, sharks, and of course, the beloved dolphin. To read this entire book, find it at your local library or bookstore today. And now it's time to explore the Texas State Aquarium in Corpus Christi to find several of these animals that cause great commotion in the ocean. It's going to be a great adventure. Let's take a look. I am so excited to be here at the Texas State Aquarium in Corpus Christi, and I'm joined today by Kara. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, I'm really excited. She is the Conservation and Animal Wellness Specialist here at the aquarium, and I am so excited just to learn from you all about the different species in our book today. So I will just let you take it from here. Okay, I am really, really excited. This is one of my favorite exhibits at the aquarium. Right here front and center, we actually have one of our Southern stingrays. These are a very large species. She is probably two and a half to three feet in width. And she's actually the smaller of our two in this exhibit. Ooh. Her name is Little Ray. Then coming right behind the shipwreck, maybe there she goes over the rock work is our larger one and her name is Big Mama. She's probably closer to four feet in width. Um, stingrays are a type of fish called an elasmobranch. So there are different types of fish. There's about 31,000 species of fish in the world and there are still a lot more that could potentially be discovered. So they actually are some of the <laughs> involved, wow. some of the largest number of animals. This is a green moray eel. So they have that green coloration because of their slime coat. So a lot of fish have a slime coat that protects them and keeps them healthy and strong. Underneath, they're actually a brown color. Wow. So that's a little bit of something unique about them, but you'll notice that they swim almost like a snake does through mm -hmm. the water. So they don't have those side fins that a lot of fish have. They just have that dorsal fin that's long and flowy and they swim in that ribbon-like state. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, it doesn't hamper their ability to get through the water column at all. So they like to hide out in our shipwreck. So this exhibit <laughs> actually also shows some of those areas where we can use artificial things to mm -hmm. help rebuild the reef. This exhibit actually focuses on shipwrecks and shipwrecks are a really great place for animals mm -hmm. to find shelter. So sometimes when a ship is no longer seaworthy, yes. they'll actually clean it up and purposefully sink it so that we can build more artificial reefs to give our animals some more shelter out there. That is really unique. I did not know that. Yeah, it's a very interesting way to just offer some mm -hmm. rehabilitation for those reef areas. The stars of this exhibit are our six sandbar sharks. You'll see we have one male and five females in this exhibit. And sandbar sharks are definitely one of those true shark body shape animals. Mm -hmm. So there's actually a huge variety in the shark world also. There are around 500 species of shark, mm -hmm. but and not all of them look like a sandbar shark does. There's a lot that live on the bottom. There's a lot that have kind of a flat shape to their bodies, but these guys are built to cut through the water. So their scales are actually <laughs> more like teeth. They're called dermal oh. denticles or placoid scales. Okay. And they're built to streamline the sharks as much as possible through the water. Oh. The other thing you'll notice, this is Raina. She's our spotted eagle ray. I just want to point her out while she's oh, visible. Wow. But the thing you'll notice about the sharks and the stingrays is that their bodies are extremely flexible. Mm -hmm. And that's because they have cartilage skeletons. So there are not any bones in their bodies. 
So those are the two big groups, the cartilaginous fishes mm -hmm. and the bony fishes. Okay. So you'll notice a little bit of a difference in how these guys swim as compared to how our bony fish swim. Mm -hmm. They have more of that S-curve shape to their yes. body as well. And their fins are super important in keeping them afloat. Um. So you'll notice that they're almost built like an airplane. Yes, that's a good way to put it. Yep, they're very similar to an airplane. Fish have that gas bladder that I talked about, mm -hmm. a swim bladder that helps keep them in the water column. Sharks don't have that. They actually have their liver filled with oil. And that's what keeps them buoyant. And it's really important that they have that because sharks move up and down in the water column a lot faster. Oh, that's true. And a lot deeper than fish do. And oil is a liquid, so it doesn't have to worry about being compressed like air does. So it helps them to be able to move quickly up and down in the water column. Wow. I didn't think about that. Yeah. So oh, it's a really, really fascinating adaptation that allows them to be mm -hmm. built for the environment that they're hunting and living in. One of the most interesting questions that we get and common questions is why the sharks are in here with fish and why they're not eating them. Ah. <laughs> and that's because we actually really manage their diet. Oh, okay. Sharks only need to eat between four and six of their body percent a week, which isn't very oh, much. Wow. It's not very much at all. Our dolphins, in contrast, need to eat about that every single day. So our dolphins have to eat a lot more than the sharks do. Mm -hmm. Oh, and wow. we have their body weights measured uh -huh. as closely as we can get them and then we base the diet off of that body weight percentage. Mm -hmm. So we keep them well fed, we keep them full, and then they don't feel the need to hunt with the fish that are in their tank with them. Very interesting. That's so awesome. This tank just highlights the commotion in the ocean so well. And there's such, so much going on that it's hard to take in at one time. This is so awesome. Wow. Yeah, so these are our three southerns. As you can see, they're a lot smaller than the others. Yes. And then, oh, and we have an Atlantic in here. So we have three or four yellow stingrays and then a little Atlantic in here as well. Wow, these are, it's so cool how you guys have all different sizes yeah. of stingrays and all kinds of uh, different species. Can uh, you describe to our viewers a little bit about these specific ones here in this tank? Absolutely. So there are a lot of stingray species. There's actually more stingray species than shark species. Wow. Um, but we have southern stingrays in this exhibit which you saw a bigger version of in the caribbean sea exhibit these are all males in here they uh have a little bit of a different body shape so stingrays have pectoral fins still mm -hmm. but they attach to their head so this is called their disc oh the disc so okay. it's a disc um and then that long tail comes off the body these animals do have barbs, which is where they get that stingray name. Yes. Here in our touch pools, we actually trim those barbs just like you trim your fingernails. Oh. So it doesn't hurt the stingrays at all, but it helps us ensure that the interactions are safe. Sometimes people get really nervous about stingrays. They've heard sure. stories yeah. or they've been stung before. Aww. And so having a touch pool like this is a really great opportunity in a safe setting mm -hmm. for people to actually overcome that fear. Yes. So one of the things that we always talk about for people to stay safe around stingrays is that when you're out at the beach, you want to do what we call the stingray shuffle. And all that means oh. is that as you walk through the sand, you're just going to drag your feet instead okay. of picking them up and placing them. Because as you do that, stingrays have an ama and sharks actually, but both have an amazing ability to sense vibrations and electromagnetic fields. So as you drag your feet, they can oh. sense you a little bit sooner. And yeah. if they don't sense you, you're going to come up under them instead of stepping on, on top. Them. So anytime that someone gets stung, it's usually because the stingray gets, feels a little bit threatened. That's interesting. So that's how you can stay safe with stingrays. On this side of the exhibit, we've got our yellow stingrays and our Atlantic wow. juvenile. So she, this is an Atlantic stingray. She's still a little bit little. They don't get nearly as large as the Southerns, but they have a little bit of a similar body shape. 
You can tell Atlantic stingrays apart because of the sharper point to that nose area, that mm -hmm. rostrum. Yes. And if it helps you remember, you can actually think A for Atlantic because it looks a little bit like an A. Oh, that's a good way to, to think about it. Can yeah. I touch one? Absolutely. So our only rules for the touch tank are that we just use a two, two. finger touch two right fingers. along their back. Let's see. Or is it close one? <laughs> Let's see, this guy. Oh, it's deep down in here. Oh, wow. Oh, that one, that one has um, kind of pointy. Um, yeah. So some of the stingray species do have a little bit of almost like scales along their back. Uh -huh. Most stingray species have lost a lot of, sta of the scaliness the that a lot of fish have. Sure. But some still do have a few around their body. And that Atlantic stingray is one of those. This guy comes around. These guys are also fascinating because their mouth is on the oh. bottom of their body while their oh. eyes are on top. So that means that they can't see their food when they actually go to eat. Oh, wow. So that's where that electromagnetic ability of sensing comes into a huge amount of play mm -hmm. because when they can't see that food, they're guided directly to it by the electromagnetic field that it gives off. Wow. Can you imagine eating your food without seeing it? How crazy is that? That's wild. Yeah. So we have made it to the top of the Caribbean Sea exhibit. And this is an awesome view, kind of an aerial view of all the great specimens in this tank. But right now we have talked about the stingray specifically today, but can we talk a little bit about your dolphins? Of course. So we are a facility that is very blessed to have four Atlantic male bottlenose dolphins. Um, they're an amazing animal. They're also built for water, yes. but they're a little bit different than a lot of our fish because they're actually mammals. So oh, that's right. they're marine mammals. So yes. they breathe air, which is a big difference between fish and dolphins. Mm -hmm. And they do a lot of aerial things. They're a very athletic and acrobatic species of animal. Mm -hmm. And that's really, really important for them to maintain their health. So our dolphin trainers are actually very, very important in their ability to work with those animals and develop strong relationships so mm -hmm. that they can do training sessions that help either in the animal's health, they can mm -hmm. do things to train so that they can participate in their own health sessions. Yes. And to just keep them active and mentally stimulated. They're a very smart animal and they need interaction and they need stimulation all the time to keep them healthy and strong. So that's one of the amazing things that our dolphin training team gets to do every day is to help keep those animals healthy and strong and having an enriching life here at the Texas State Aquarium. I love how joyful and jovial the dolphins are. They're just so fun to be with. It's like they have their own little personalities. They really do. Dolphins, it's a, with any mammal species, it's a little more easy to see the difference in their personalities, but believe mm. it or not, these guys also have big personality differences. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. Think you've seen it all? Not even close. Let's go find some more commotion in the ocean. just a little bit about um, the mission of the aquarium. Absolutely. So the mission of the Texas State Aquarium is to engage people with animals, mm -hmm. inspire appreciation for our seas, and to help support wildlife conservation. Those are three things that are very, very important to us. So we engage people with animals by educating them. So we have our touch pools, 
We have different feed the fish experiences mm -hmm. where people get to get a little more up close and personal with our animals. We also have an in the water experience with our sharks called Snorkel with the Sharks. Wow. And that's another great opportunity for people to experience sharks in a safe manner mm -hmm. and maybe help overcome some fear and yeah. some of those myths that we hear about sharks a lot of the time. As far as inspiring appreciation for our seas, all you have to do is walk through the doors. You get to see these incredible it's animals. True. You get to just enjoy them and it really can be inspiring. My own desire to enter this career started at an aquarium and I was four years old and it started the dream and I've been very blessed to pursue this career. Um, and then as far as supporting wildlife conservation, we do a lot with different species around the area. Our ocelots are a great example. Mm -hmm. Texas ocelots are pretty severely endangered and we have two ocelots here at the aquarium and we're going to be able to hopefully help in that situation yes. so that we can keep the Texas ocelot population healthy and sustained for a much longer period of time. We also have the opportunity to participate with scientists in some different studies that they're doing. Oh wow! So that also helps with wildlife conservation yes. because then scientists are able to either compare what's going on with the animals in the aquarium mm -hmm. to those that are out in the natural environment mm -hmm. or we've even gone out and done sh surveys of animals that are out in the bay so that they can just get a better idea of what's going on out in the natural world. So it's a really great opportunity for us to help participate in all of those areas. This has been an incredible visit to the Texas State Aquarium. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank you for having me. We've really enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming adventures. So we'll see you on the next adventure. And remember to always keep reading. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Want more book days? Well, the adventure has only begun. Check out these episodes and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming adventures.